Hey, Tequila! Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation? So what's happening? Yeah, Tequila Sunset. How are the, um, high-concept, reality-based adventures proceeding? Bend it to my view, I'm the law. That's the spirit. I used to shape reality into my image a long time ago. Sadly, things aren't going that well in Idiot Doom Spiral Land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No. This guy's your buddy, buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks. <laughs> we are saving the world. Place! Place time call! These guys are really Don't drunk. Call. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. It's you. You're... We've met before. No, you sure don't. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you want to know? Mm-hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. Hey, let's not jump <laughs> ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be... Does that sound like something you... The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually. It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. No One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the pl- Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the re- Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewski. Three men are standing on a wooden platform extending out from the shore of a dilapidated fishing village. Their cheeks red, spirits high, bears in hand. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. Ouch. The time hath come. Get drunk. So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I have- The time hath come for Tequila Sunset! The end of all things! <laughs> After which, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. The muscles in your right leg tense up, your hands cramp on the steering wheel. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered <laughs> in seaweed and shit. Seaweed monster? Like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It, recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolence. What else was there to do? Thank you, brothers, for your helping hand. We asked about the whole Tequila Sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. No, that's just what your mother called you. <laughs> your real name. Ours. It was an all-night drinkathon. How they're beautiful Ouch. and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen. Wow. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. If you only knew. Huh. You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard. And that we've all been f No one's fucked me! Abigail! It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. 
If I had to guess, beside your gun and your badge... Oh, he knows about it. You said it. something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need <laughs> anyone to do it. You're a lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Yeah, you kept talking <clears throat> about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. You kept calling yourself a goddamn <laughs> superstar. As you've already determined, the actual number is just over 200. But what's a little embellishment between friends? I know, right? No thanks to the squares at the precinct. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. That is really good. Let's get this done. What's it about? Uh... I'll let my hand address the situation. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very successful businessman. I've signed more than a few lease forms or whatever the fuck they were. Anyone's got a pen? The pro's gonna do it. All right. Next, the Lanius engine. He did inspire. Hey, Abs! Don't you? You call. I need you to sign this document right here. Don't call her. Don't call Abaqua. <laughs> <sighs> Great job, Abs. Nailed it. Don't know if I've mentioned it, but I used to be a businessman, and as a businessman, Oops. I'm going to keep the pen for my trouble. I knew it. No, that was my favorite thing. My favorite is the gun he lost. Hey, guys. About fucking time, man. I've done my duty. Don't call Abigail. Thank you for your services, gentlemen. Should we go and mail this? I think I saw a mailbox on the... Okay, what's on your mind? whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. It depends. The gleam in his eye. You might get scammed here. Uh oh. No. The reality of the situation requires a rather. M I don't want it, man. I need. <laughs> so, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A that very well might be the case. But looking at you, I can say with great confidence that you too. T Later. That page three girl, what? she must be the most beautiful. Come on, beauty is inviting you on a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage you can make with just your hand. Yes, sure is. Oh, come on. Don't say you've forgotten that as well. You can feel what you want to do. You want to party in at her thighs. Party with Miss Page Three all the way to Disco Zero. Absolutely not. <laughs> fuck, fuck. But it's the origin of all disco, buddy. Why not? Whatever, coward. Don't. The heck, man. <laughs> Dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito, bullet holes, and other than kicking. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. About a week's worth of mail as collected, it probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug Everard. You know he's going to play you. All right, let's go back to Everard. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Healed up, soldier. The mail collection box has no faith in your psychopath. <laughs> Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Now, what can Everard Claire do for you today? 
local drug trade. Nah, I'm just gonna the go golden boy it. returns once more. Wonderful. Golden boy. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. Yay. You've given the children of Martinez a bright future. Yeah, and you've right. proven yourself someone I can trust. Someone I can really do. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing. And judging from how happy he is, it looks like he did it. He doesn't appear to suspect trickery. Well done, sire. By guile and deceit, you're in. You don't uh -huh. know his full plan. Perhaps he expected trickery. Perhaps the signatures weren't important. The point is, do not think you're ahead of him. Did you order the hangman kill? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but yeah. it had to be done. An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. I get that. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. <laughs> okay. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling <laughs> your gun like that? Wild. Anyway. Union boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to where- Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. Uh -huh. None of this does. As I said, she's a character. <laughs> I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Unstable is good, actually. She will be easier to disarm. Right. No, wait. Actually, Unstable is pretty bad. Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. <laughs> it actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Mm. Great, Harry, ball. great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martin A. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Ah, yes, your side investigation. Thank you. You've got some. Actually, Rivershaw doesn't have a mayor. Too bad. Okay. Thickness. Reverse right here. John Damery, you found me. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. Diamond? And his shirt is still unbuttoned. Beautiful. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Uh, what? Beautiful. I have some good news for you. 
My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? What? Trust me. You do. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and no. looks around. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into... Besides, I've got a... Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. To the city. It's a beautiful night. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club. Music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly, and as something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth, as we'll talk, just not tonight. Take care, all right? I know he left. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. Hmm. Different, of course. Something so mysterious about the way he talks. Very. He's barely holding it together. It Come on, detective, let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. Right. We got a witness. Let's go. Oh, nice, nice. Money. Money, money. Oh, we don't have to pay for the cost anymore. Since we got that shack. Dragon. You have acquired the robe. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. Just gonna My name it. is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur La Clé. Sounds like. French? I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. No. First ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. Yeah. Okay. Let's fuck with him. Who does he think he is? <laughs> Assisting you? Oh yes, my friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's a mystery. That's really all mystery. I can tell you about it. What was that? You were supposed to the lieutenant <laughs> takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Oh, okay. That's all, right? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Easy, detective. No need to jump to conclusions. Because I did it? <laughs> He's clearly not a man accustomed to being spoken to in that manner, let alone to being accused of murder. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. Oh, nobody wanted to see that. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Mm. Interesting. I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. 
but they were very loud and very Martinez. Let's mm. just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with... I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. That's a giant you're describing. <laughs> no, they were all quite human. <laughs> yes, I went back inside. Yes, back inside. Keep yourself safe from the killing. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Mm. But we are fairly certain the lady driver was present. Hey. It's possible, officer, but I cannot say for certainty. It was very dark, you must remember. I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. Aeropagite. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. Two Aeropagites and a mask could be Eugene, Theo, and Elaine. Right. Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. Hmm. No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping. I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villedroin. Villedroin. Anything I can do to assist the RCM. The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Hmm. Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. La communauté internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. Yes, as I said before, I am a commissioner from sur la clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe stability. there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the moral intern is joking or not. It is the most important thing. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't uh. change. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. Mm. The Coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of mm. the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Mm. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. It's the international organization for moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the Coalition. There are more nefarious powers to work for than the Moral Intern. But of course, because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. Democratic, eh? Hmm? Me? You've managed to catch the Lieutenant of Guard, but I'm a Lieutenant of the RCM. A very moralist answer. The lieutenant mm -hmm. is practiced in the art of putting on a show for one's superiors. Martinez? No. Martinez is... Rivachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. 
You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. Action, eh? <laughs> Do you think peace is boring? What about prosperity? Hmm. My friend, that is only because you have never known the alternative. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. What's there to say? Tulaki is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Because a great percentage of Rivachol's culture hails from Surlakli, its language... Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir Laclay's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. Whatever you wish, officer. Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. Kedra. But between you and me, their potential membership is a more that it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures. God, yes. Sweet standardization. The backbone of rationality. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. A supranational political alliance. What? The United States of Occident. You mean Revachol? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS. Sure. No, no, candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night, civil wars lasting for years. One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion. And not just allowed, encouraged even. Have you ever tried debate? There's a joke here. Come on, it's so juvenile. Besides, there's no way this man is going to get it. That's why it's good. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> I've heard it's oodles of fun. Not that I have time to take up new hobbies myself. See, he didn't get it. Good, the lieutenant lets out a long nasal sigh. Sorry, who? But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts. He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? Mm. The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. I'm just enjoying the view. We're old friends. Nothing's taboo between. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's very... I'm all ears, officer. A I moment. That's all. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Uh huh. <laughs> sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. It a one. The old woman still the buzz of it. There's a gap where the name of that song should be. You should ask her about it right now. Yes, I can't really sleep anymore. My suggestion is don't a lullaby my mother used to surrender. To the night. That's kind of grim. Yes, it does. Okay, it's ten o'clock. 
Put your hands where I can see them. Oh, there you are. Show me your hands. This is the pigs. Show me your hands. Right now. She's really crazy. Scavenged, battery powered police lights protrude from her back. The flickering light show reveals a gun in her shaking hand. It definitely looks like a pig. Her hand is trembling from some sort of neurodegenerative disease. Madame, please drop the firearm immediately. What? You shouldn't be here. Something's very wrong with her. She's completely out of control. <laughs> okay. The man appears to be pulling out an object from his pocket. Feel the threat! Superseding event. Split second decision. Get on the ground! Get up! Feel on the ground! I want you on the subject yourself to a full body cavity search. Prohibit. Be careful, detective. Don't do anything that might set her off. The right. situation looks bad. This is dangerous. You're 70% certain you always leave your gun loaded. Officer, I need of assistance! Suspect, alert! Get on the- Ma'am, please. We want to help you, but you need to lower that weapon. Doesn't want to hurt her. This is flight or fight. Do <laughs> or die. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Big red key. That's code for the battering ram. Cop talk. You know this. It's a goddamn police shit bag. On the pavement. As she waves her hands, you notice familiar look at ampoules and packets sticking out of the magnesium, drumming, maybe oh. even speed. My god, she has speed on her. I don't think she's on drugs. Being off drugs might actually be the problem here. Hmm. Back up! Back up! Back up! Yeah, back her up. Right up against those boxes and do some sex healing. Stop! Yeah. Her. For the love of God, don't. No! There's a scenario unfolding in her head right now. What's the situation, officer? Law enforcement compromised! Impersonating a police officer! Uh-uh. Hi there. This might be your only chance. No, 
Stickin'. Ever cares anymore? Why would they cheat me like this? Oh, boy. We need to figure out what to do with her now. Oh, God. Nobody's ever around. Nobody ever comes to... She's in a stupor. I've seen this before. God knows for how long. Could be days when they get like this. Honestly, I don't know. Dementia, probably. Dementia and Channel 8 and loneliness. Right. Could be. Her hands were trembling and she did seem uncoordinated. But what are we gonna do with her? Do we just arrest her? scratched skin is warm to the touch but the person inside i don't think there's any need for that in her current state and without a gun we could let titus know this is a perfect problem for the local peacekeepers to handle they might even know her family Hmm, yeah, that makes sense. Then we can ask him once we get back to the whirling. But we have to hurry, because it's late and they might have already gone home. But I think we are done here for now. Let's head out. This is done. Please. Leave the radio on. Reflex to what? She stands motionless. Just a heap of clothes and flashes now. Maybe if you search her once more. Right. The woman stands slumped. It's one of those things, uh, there were narcotics in there too. You're thinking of taking them. Do. She doesn't even flinch as you reach. Oh, That's my cat. Is that yours? It's hard to say. It's been so long since you wore yours. The lieutenant nods. You take the vial of Parolidon and the bottle. She didn't consume them. She didn't look high. <clears throat> You're taking... Listen to him for once. <laughs> sure. I guess that's fine. The old woman doesn't react. Oh yeah, I got everything I need. Preholidon. And that's a lot of drugs, you. Authority. Encyclopedia. Oh, that's the first time I'm actually wearing this. <laughs> Baby Ferrari. Is the hat? Oh, okay, it is. Exception drop. Logic authority. Authority. Got more authority now. The door has oh, seen yeah. me today. I'll be sleeping in my room in the whirling. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Hmm. Okay. Bye. Oh -ho. A brisk coastal wind still howls. The room feels muffled. Like you pulled your hat over. What is this place to you? Oh. <laughs> Overhead, you hear the forlorn shriek of seagulls. A middle-aged man stands in a rundown shack on the edge of a fishing village. Listening to the heater outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. 
Look under the floorboards. The heck? On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. Right, let's do it. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, reducing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against it chilly. They feel so smooth, surprisingly Yay. so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. You don't have a face anymore. It's all baby ass now. The water reflects back a vague image of your clean shaven face. You almost look like a professional. Of course. Face, such as it is, a regular human face, sans expression. Interesting. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face? I would like that, remember? <laughs> Hi, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Oh, that's good to know, I guess. Why is it in the sea? <laughs> this calls for a funeral, if you ask me. Hi. Feels deserved, don't you think? Falling in the line of duty like that and all? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe I should. Why odd? Our things are part of our life world. They're made with our human sweat and they share human history. We should care about them as we care about humans. The life world? Someone's been reading up on last century Gottwaldian philosophers. Play it cool now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you won't even be able to get it out of the water before early June. And where are you going to bury it? Who to invite? Take it from someone who's been through a few funerals. It's easiest to just leave them there and let nature take care of it. I know, right? Nature will handle it. It's going to be quite a few years before nature is able to completely take care of a motor carriage. You could always come back in a few months and see if you still want to give it a proper send-off. I understand, believe me. I really do. I think about all the frivolous side activities I could be doing every time I go out there with my nets. But daydreaming is a rich man's game. At sea, you can't afford to be careless and dream. Anyway, what are we talking about here again? Talking about a date, you know. The sea is going to calm down soon. I can feel it. That's 50 years. The wind is turning southeast. Do you think she really needs more uh, of that uh, after a man died at sea? What if I told you it is actually possible to go on a date sober? Before recorded history, men and women were able to do simple, very primitive things together sober. Acknowledge the situation and keep it big. I have, and I don't really. Now, go for it. Walks are fucking great cardio. Very stable fat burner. Aerobic exercise. <laughs> As you for a while. Walk. Just a walk? I don't know, officer. I would not have taken you for an innocent perambulator.
Where would this walk take us, officer? All right, I will walk with you. But you need to understand that nothing is going to happen. We're just walking. Right. Me too. It's been ages since I just had a normal conversation with one of you guys. All right, I'll go put the kids to bed and we'll meet at Land's End in 15 minutes. She doesn't wait for an answer. You better get ready. Oh. -ho. Hey, where the heck is Land End? There, on the ice. Target practice. What? Target practice for improving your aim. Some of us precisely. No obstructions, just the seagull. No, don't throw anything at the bird. The bird will get hurt. <laughs> it's a seagull. They're practically immortal. And the only thing you'll be throwing is some dirt. Come on, do it. Don't be such a puss. No, it won't be fun. It'll, it will be okay. From a purely physical point of view. These birds are used to worse things than bits of flying soil. Okay, here we go. Particles of soil, grass, and tiny told you we need to practice. What if this was a combat situation? We wouldn't be talking anymore. Try again. <laughs> a clump of soil seems to graze the bird's wing. Fuck off, you bipedal rodent. Better, <laughs> but practice makes perfect. One more time. Right into the sea bull's eye. Oh, what? <laughs> Wait. Oh. Gotcha. Oh no. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I just died. Oh, I died. <laughs> I hope I'm fine. The woman gazes steadily at the waves. A sudden gust picks up her dark hair and lets it fall again, tussled, wild. She brushes a few stray locks from her eyes and only then spots you approaching. Hi, so here you are. It's late and the sun is going down. It'll be dark soon. If we stay here long enough, we will be joined by a cortege of drunks and teenagers. Know that you're not the first guy to bring a girl to Land's End. This is what the locals call a, a make-out spot. <laughs> that is not going to happen here today. Really? I just want to make that clear, Dimples. Across the rusty water, that's La Delta, the financial district. In the mist-covered distance, towers rise as a rebuke to the poverty of this coast. Uh -huh. <laughs> Drinking men aren't known for keeping their appointments. <laughs> I don't miss it for the world. world. <laughs> Those big words men like to throw around as though they had weight. Let's just admire this piece of the world we happen to have in front of us, eh? As she turns to face the sun reflected in the waves and the skyscrapers rising across the bay, you cannot help following her steady gaze. You should say something, anything. Maybe the tequila sunset thing. <laughs> a common Revisholian expression means drinking yourself to death. Ah. So, are you going to keep the name?
<laughs> well then, Officer Dubois. The remains of the dying sun are reflected in the waves and the skyscrapers rising across the bay. Your mind clears for a moment as your senses take it all in. Not just the glass skyscrapers, fragile looking in the shimmering air. Isn't it strange for this all-powerful thing, the sun, to be so generous towards us? You know, the best time to go out fishing is usually towards sunset, when the water is warmer. The sun also falls on the capeside tenements and war-torn ruins. An old sea fortress juts out, seemingly impervious to the sheen cast over everything else, shaking you out of your reverie. The sun isn't always that great. Think of people living in desert climates with sparse vegetation and little drinking water. Oh, that was a bit of pride and a bit of superstition. And a bit of conceptual unity too, it being yellow and all. Right. Now you're just nitpicking. But I, I concede, maybe desert people sometimes disagree. The salt in the air and the cries of the gulls and the skewers. Grit of the sand and the green glint of broken bottles. But still your gaze always returns to the dazzling streaks of light. Wherever they may be reflected, their fading opulence. It's bringing us spring, summer. It's entirely on our side. No matter what we do or who we are, for absolutely no reason. Sunlight, no other powerful being, certainly no powerful organization or government. How can that be? No. And it will outlive them all. Right. Maybe some general remarks before you say something big. Work your way up to the cool. <laughs> Oh no, my conceptualization is bad. These? These aren't real fish hooks, silly. They're earrings shaped to look like fish hooks. A drunk called Rosemary brought them to me. I kept them. Hmm. She's right. They're made mostly of plastic. A cheap novelty gift you can buy from a flower shop or a kiosk. The wind ruffles her hair as she looks at the setting sun. Hmm, we have a few more questions. Thank you. I'm half Ubi. My mother was from Ubi Sunt. Not a lot of sun there, I hear. Though I've never been. That sounds like Ubi <laughs> Okay. The wind ruffles her hair as she looks at the setting sun. <laughs> it's enough that my fish goes there. 50 real a piece they ask for spring cod. Wow. Out on the terrace of La Fruit de Fond, a hip business lunch spot in mm. downtown La Delta, glasses clink over a spread of oysters. Someone can't decide what to eat. Someone recommends a ceviche. Someone shields her eyes. Good one. Um, I'm gonna go with the rope. She thinks it was a riddle. She must not even know of that business. Better that way. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, I just reduce it. <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Two different approaches to cap this off with style. Right. Showing off your knowledge? Hi. And a benevolent one. When did you last have one of those on your side? Well, now you have that giant thing to watch over you. So, to hell with love. 
The wind's going to pick up soon, and I have to go, but... Have this. Oh! The sun's good, but it doesn't stick things. I've no use for it anymore. No. Men around here are too drunk to pose a threat to me. Oh, no. Doubt it. But thank you for the company. This is as far as it goes with her. You'd need to put a year between you and your last drink for anything more. Ah. Farewell. Well, at least it ends well. Bringing of the Lord, Lord Jaw. Lord Jaw. Okay, so we now know why you have Lord Jaw. Why you say the law in a weird manner. And why your jaw does that thing. Ooh. You had polio as a child. Jaw's you had still gotten weird. vaccinated. It must have been right after the revolution. Not a lot of vaccine going around then. So you got infantile para... It's getting late. It's quite a day, shall we? An old mirror hangs on the wall. Bed is comforting, if a bit run down. You have earned yourself a rest. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. Again. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. Recorded in you. Forever. Oh. No. You're spinning tapes at the discotheque. <laughs> right. On and on it goes. Behold, there are millions of them down there. It's the world, Harry Boy. Everybody. And you're, you can never forget this shit. Erase that. It's not possible anymore. You're the son of the world again. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? You'll go insane if you keep going up. For the greater good. Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, aren't <laughs> He's got no idea what he's in for. Cause only love. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is... You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the wind. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Uh oh I managed to sleep at all. Good. You're up. Listen, there's something. It's a suspicion or a feeling. An earth shattering deduction from your psyche. What will those guys come up with in the every day? Things seem to spin more and more wildly out of control. Oh, sure. You've been making pro, but who's focusing on the big questions? Ah. Oh. You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of, like, a committee. You don't need no stinking committee. You're the law. Only the most even keeled minds in Martinez, your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a net together. Right. You'll be able to discover who has la responsabilité La responsibility. And if necessary, you will have the most likely your findings will be collected in a report with once they've reviewed it. Those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations. Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the good luck. Your report is eagerly and this thing. Good morning. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps uh, I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to damage. What? Either way, good on you. You were saying? Ah, I'm glad to hear it, detective. I was wondering when we'd get to this very... If you ask me, it's high time for you to put the bottle away. <laughs> Sober up, get back to basic, and I hope we don't even need to discuss the street drugs you've been abusing. Come on, man. Why are you pronouncing it like that gentleman from the Institute of Price Stability? You know what? Forget it. What specifically are you trying to assign responsibility for? But isn't that our job? Ah, no, I understand. Next, I suppose you're going to tell me you need to form a committee to assign this responsibility. Fascinating. And here I believed your recent turn towards moralism was just an act. In any event, I am just a humble law official. I may work under the moral interns and bread. You know who might be, though? That Mr. Villodroin, the gentleman you met. If I were trying to get in touch with the coalition, I would start by seeking him out. But first, you might need to speak with his young companion. Now, was there anything else? No. That's one brutal motor carriage. If I were a real skull now, okay. I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. Yeah, tribal <laughs> shit. Ahem. <clears throat> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. Mm -hmm. I have to stop you right there. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, I can tell you who we're not, cop. Which is not to say that the skulls. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man is we're not part of the scope you don't know mm. what kind of cop are you the question was rhetorical Besmati or the Besmati. oh we got money from this the nastiest bunch of psychos ever possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger Infi they usually occupy the burnt out quarter in jamrock or you can find them loitering around their brightly painted bottom lighted vehicles ah uh, <laughs> i can't wait to become a skull Bottom line. Murder? Yeah, sure. We'll. Also, he was hanged. <laughs> he was hanged for. Yeah. I'm... These punks don't know anything. Hey, stop. Oh, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. Exactly. How can one know shit? What if it's <laughs> art? Or just a mere specter? So what do you think we know? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Oh man, yeah. We're not fucking kids, man. Be wary of the abyss. It's a threat, an impotent threat of violence. A threat. Retaliate immediately. You'll see. They'll fall over like bitch leaves. <laughs> These boys ain't got the cojones. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much, I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Yeah, didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least. Apart from the Unions themselves, of course. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. But in a non-threatening and definitely legal way. We'll <laughs> fuck the system from the inside later. 
Just be cool now. Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Mm-hmm. What about them? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket, or are they derived from something else? To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times. And even then, it isn't certain that you'll get anything. You get more fish in a shorter time. What? Because when one fucks everything... Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person. The word piss f epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. The also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, what I mean by this is, we are all piss f It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field. Is it <laughs> a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops. Yes? What is? What are you implying? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. <laughs> Neither. Fine, if only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think it seems about right, especially considering your heroic exit attempt. That's an origin story for- So are we done here? Or... You don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? Oh, can I? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skull. Suggest their massive skulls. Come on. What? No. Skull. Yeah, man. Keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Wow. You boys are ambitious. <laughs> Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skulls. You're destined. He gets it. Shut the fuck up. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Please be quiet. <laughs> what, what do you want? The, the jackets? <laughs> oh. Man, okay, I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. Fuck. <laughs> the lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. Cold-hearted cop. The need will not arrive. The jackets are meant to complete each other. If a man was standing alone on a street corner with I don't know, Eric. It's called. Come on, out. Kim. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull out toolbox, and the soft. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? One moment. Can you please describe the body, age, sex, cause of death? We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Mm -hmm. Any information on the library card? Good. 
You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case or should I assign it to someone? I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Hmm. I'm afraid they're closed. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We should try again. Anything else, detective? 57th, over and out. In the cabin, east. Oh. Clear.